Good evening, it's Tim here in the Green Screen Garage. In this uh, video, I wanna show you how to use the template that I've made for MMRC. Um, I put that together in April, May for the FAI Team Australia Selection event, and I wanna give it out as a template for other clubs to use and customize for their needs. Um, it's super easy to import and also use. You don't need a stream deck or any fancy hardware. You can just click through trackside and it will change scenes in OBS and do certain actions for you um, automatically um, as part of actually interacting with Trackside. So that's an amazing feature about it that only that, that app has. And I think it's very powerful to be able to create um, you know, a watchable stream for your club without needing to spend years and years and years playing around um, like I have. So it should make it a lot easier for anyone wanting to get started and it should be pretty quick. Follow along with the mouse, follow the files. I'll have an instruction, there'll be instructions in the description of the video. Um, and if I miss anything, of course, uh, let me know in the comments. Um, but like, here's an example. That's an example about what it looks like. Um, and you can see there, like when you start a race, you know, there's a bit of a sequence that happens there, a few little animations. Um, yeah, it looks pretty good. So let's hop inside and get in front of the computer and I'll show you how to do it. All right, so here's the folder of all the files you're gonna need. First things first is have a logo for your own club, ready to go. Have FPV Trackside downloaded and installed already. Have also downloaded OBS Studio and installed that, as well as the Move Transition plugin and the OBS Advanced Masks plugin. And last but not least, the um, zip file, which is all the little files that I've made and um, put together for you to import and configure with minimum effort. Um, everything in here normally would go into a folder on your C drive called Stream. That's what mine looks like. It's where I've always put things. Um, you can put anything. You can put them anywhere in anywhere else on your computer, but it just means that a lot more of the file paths will need to be re-referenced when you import um, the OBS package, and so it'll be a bit, bit more effort on your part there. So roll with me, and it'll be easier. Um, let's open OBS straight away. And the first thing we're going to want to do is just import the scene collection. So go up to the top menu there, scene collection, and choose import. And then that brings you brings us this import menu here. Click the three little dots and navigate to the folder, stream, exports, and choose that JSON file. Click open. And if it all populates well, just click import. That means we should now have the template as a scene to switch to. And away we go. Uh, when we open it, it should load to this scene um, and hopefully no errors. First things first we want to do is import a couple of scripts. This is going to be for the clock and the countdown timer um, for the pre-stream loop. So go up to the tools menu at the top, then choose scripts. Um, there'll be a plus button down here. And if you've got them in the folder where I've put them, they'll be right here. See Windows OBS scripts, countdown days, and also add the date and time. Um, we might have to come back and open it to change the text source, but there is a way that I like to configure this. I like 12 hour time, so I will do, um, let me just bring it across from a clipboard. You're welcome to change this to anything you want. This is not specific, but um, percent %I, percent %M for 12 hour time, minutes, seconds, and also show um, the AM, PM there. Uh, and this will come back as well, but I normally roll with a two minute countdown timer. Um, Oh, this can see it, so we can fill this in now. There is a countdown text, and that's all we need. Uh, and also, um, this will go to staging. Oh, sorry, no. Race director event intro. All right, let's full screen into this. Um, let me explain all the sources first. So. On a given day, you'll start at the start scene. This is the countdown one. Um, there is a scene for racing. There is a scene for uh, the staging. There is a scene for pre-race, post-race, replay, channel list, photo booth. These are all things that are um, changed automatically when you interact with Trackside, um, and as well as the results pages as well. Um, the four things down in the base scene are the parts where we need to configure elements that are specific to your club. So, And I've highlighted some of those there with green and blue. And at the end of the day, um, and here is where your ending scene will be. All right, so let's start configuring these little elements to customize it to your club. Um, the first one you know, listed will be the YouTube chat. When it's highlighted in green, you're gonna have to configure this and change it every race day. Um, every time you stream, you're gonna to stream to a new URL, so you're gonna need a new chat URL if you wanna show that in your stream. Um, I've grabbed this one from an existing uh, live stream that's happening now as an example, so you can play around and 
and have a go of this before having to go live yourself, just update that URL. I've included some little bits of code here, some CSS bits and pieces that makes it look a little bit prettier as well. Nice. Um, this thing has two cameras, a pit cam and a track cam. Um, you need to change those devices to match your camera. Um, in this case, this is built on another laptop um, and I need to change this to match the laptop camera here. So for the pit cam, I'm gonna make this the um, camera built in to the laptop. And unfortunately, um, this camera in this laptop doesn't do 1920 by 1080. So I've got to change this down to 1280 by 720. And there we are. Um, and because it's meant to fit this sort of region here, I'm going to just drag it roughly to make it a little bit bigger. Just follow along, leave a bit of a border and then lock that back in place. Um, moving down to the next base scene, this is, this is the only place we need to change stuff. Um, we also want to change the club logo to match your logo for your club or chapter. So just go to where you've stored that. If you put it in C stream, it'll be easy to find. I'm gonna do this one for CMRC. Um, you'll note that the logo shape of mine is a little bit taller than the MMRC one, so it doesn't quite fit the template. So um, I'm gonna unlock that layer, that source, hold shift and just bring it down so it fits. And I'm gonna to have to move the clock around too because that's kind of not fitting as well, right? So um, I will get back to that first. The event round text, um, this is for each race round, so maybe you'll have one, you know, round one, two, three, four, or maybe it's a special event. So I'll change this to the um, uh, race 2025 racing series round one. Let's see how that fits. Yeah, it looks okay. Um, and we'll change the club title text. It'll be CMRC. Um, and let's say we could, we've probably got some extra room there. Um, We'll say we'll put the, the field we're flying at. We'll be flying at Canberra next time. All right. Um, now we've got room to see where we're going to move the clock. So I'll go up, up to the clock and we'll click on that. And I'll hold shift just to sort of make it notch over in 10 pixels at a time. And we'll just bring that over so it's not in view anymore. Um, actually, kind of looks nice to have the gray bar behind the club logo. But if you want, we can also, I'll, I'll bring it in a bit to shrink it. So that way it's not interfering with the scene. Now these red... Uh, labeled bits here. You only need to change these once ever just to match your theme. Um, the base color I've chosen was matched MMRC's yellow that I got from their club logo. So I'm going to want to pick, do the same and pick from this club logo, the, the probably the dark blue. So I'll click pick screen color and I'll just move the mouse over there. Nice. Um, I like the gray, but I could, you could change the gray to another color if you want, and you could also change the white. Um, all I'm going to do is just find which one. So there's the blue, that's the gray, which is what we'll move. And that's the white of the background. So you can change any of those three colors, how you see fit. Um, I'm just going to move this lazily across to the left, just so it's out of the way of the logo and then lock that back in place. Um, now this is where the advanced masks are used. There's just a picture that I've included there that it makes a little angle bracket. You could obviously change those as well to a different shape if you didn't like angle brackets. Say you wanted something round and smooth. Go nuts. So that's looking pretty good. Let's move on to the next scene. This is the background camera and shader border. Nothing to do here, really. Um, all we need to do here is change the track webcam. So in this one there, I'm going to use the Logitech, but it's the wrong one. So just choose something and then choose it back there. So... There we go, it's a little camera just down there. We've got a nice little beta FPV whoop and a special Jason Smith sticker. Let's go okay. All right, and that's looking pretty good there. Um, and then the last bit here, um, if you make one, there's a, you can make these sort of little animation stingers um, you know, using a URL and generate them and download them. Um, I'll include that URL as well and I've pre-prepared one for CMRC as well. So it looks kind of nice just to sort of play that when you go switch to a scene to show results and stuff like that. Don't spam it. Apparently people get annoyed. Nice, nice. All right, one thing we should do now is set up the web socket part of OBS. Um, after that, we'll jump to FPV track side. So up in the tools menu, you've got a section here called web socket server settings. Um, click the generate password a few times and then grab the password. Um, leave that default. Yes, enable authentication. This is what's going to um, be put into Trackside to show us how to 
the one that's going to do all the all the magic. So open trackside, choose an event with your theme, with your template, all that sort of stuff. Um, try to remember the name um, when this loads. Um, you might see that you've got the little um, OBS <coughs> remote control icon there, but it's red, which means it's not working. So <clears throat> click on the hamburger menu, go down to the bottom and open directory, FPV trackside directory. This brings up a folder. <clears throat> and <clears throat> in the data folder there, you're probably going to have a folder that will represent your profile. And mine's the test one for this video. And in the stream folder, I've got trackside files. And in there is a OBS remote control file. So copy that and just chuck that into your profile folder and replace it. <clears throat> Close trackside and reopen it. We'll just move this over to the side. Mm -hmm. Just move this over. Beep. All right, <clears throat> back into our event now. And we will go into the OBS remote control settings. So up the top, click the hamburger menu, down to OBS remote control. Um, and notice now that this has got a whole bunch of stuff down the left. These are all things that I've made. Um, all we need to do is put your password in there and it should be good to go. So back to track side. Uh, I, probably did, I probably lost the clipboard, so let's just copy that again. And we'll just paste that into the password field here. And go OK. So the, the way you know you've, we've done it right <clears throat> is this goes white. And that's pretty much all there is to it. One quick thing that I forgot to do before, but I'll just add it now, um, is in the race or the pre-race scene, um, we've got to go to FPV trackside. That's not going to be set correctly. This will have um, some red text. It'll be set to an older version of the same thing. Just change the window and match it to the correct version of trackside and then you'll be fine. Um, now that should be all done. We'll give it a quick demo. Um, I'll show you how it's meant to look. So the idea is um, clicking around in trackside will change the scenes in um, the in, in, in OBS automatically. So um, on a given day, you would potentially start here on the start scene. Um, we can see this countdown is not working because I haven't got the timer source like here, so I've forgotten a small little bit there, but that will be the countdown text. And maybe just to hurry things up, we'll make it five seconds. So the idea is um, you'll set that to two minutes, your stream will start, um, and I've obviously forgot also the next scene. This also needs to be set to the race director event intro. So let's just do that again. Um, so the idea is when you start the stream at the top there, it'll automatically switch to um, the race director or the pit cam to give a bit of an intro before starting the race. And then you just come to trackside. Um, and we'll, when, you, when you start clicking through the rounds, um, as in click, when I clicked on rounds to load the first round, it switched to the round scene that you've seen here. And then when we click into the first round, it's going to switch to the um, post or pre-race one. It's the post-race because I've reset it. And it'll be pre-race with a race is not run. So the scenes down the left here will automatically move through each of the progression views um, as you click around in trackside. Now, as a bit of a note, I go with a bit of the automatic taskbar hiding. Some people might hate that. So as I'll show you, it's the window size is a little bit strict and built around that. So you might want to change the dimensions of trackside in the race scene. So have it click through with the dummy timer, play around with it all. And you can see like trackside starts small, you'll see your track cam, it goes full screen. Um, but the, the window size there, it's cropped just nicely out of frame there to hide everything. But if if we've got the taskbar not hidden, then um, you'll see a bit of a, an empty bottom bar there. So I'll just quickly tweak that now so you can kind of see what it looks like. Um, t -t 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 yeah, so you might want to reshape it a bit somehow. I'm not sure how you would do that. I've always, um, yeah. 
You might just want to do it that way. Oh, I don't like it. Hide the taskbar. That's my advice. But you could, yeah, just poorly resize that out of um, out of frame. <laughs> Tweak around with it. Work it out. Um, and when you hit, yeah, when we hit end race, it switches to the post race scene. And similarly with any of the other scenes too. If you click, uh, I haven't got something for track, but lap records. If that's what you're using to show the results, it shows the stinger. Then it shows your lap records, lap count points, channel list, they all do something, right? And once you've got that set, all you need to do is update the YouTube URL and the round and the text, and away you go. You've got a template that changes the content around for your race days, keeps it a bit more interesting rather than just seeing trackside and nothing else and not knowing what's going on in the background. When I'm watching streams, I'm always interested to see, you know, what's going on in the pits, what's the activities, what are people talking about, just trying to, you know, find anything entertaining in there. And I think the more you can make your streams entertaining, the more people will watch them and the more engaging they are for, you know, others to watch as well. Um, that's all there is to it. I'm hoping to produce some more videos about the track side bits and pieces, but maybe some bite-sized bits. But if you want to leave a suggestion in the comments about something that you really want to see, maybe it's the Google Sheets stuff. Maybe um, it's a breakdown video on, on how to put together these remote control um, settings. Let me know what you like in there. Or maybe you just want an intro video on how to set up track side from scratch. Um, hope to make some more of these in the next few months. And I'm um, yeah, looking looking to see what sort of ideas or suggestions that you guys out there might want to see when you're running your races at home. That's all I've got. Have a play. Download the files. Let me know how you go. I've already got ideas for a V2 template too, but um, I'll probably we'll wait and see if anyone uses this one first um, before uh, making another one. Until then, see you at the next race. Woo -hoo.